Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to another episode of With the Prophet. I'm Ali Coleman, of your host. We are continuing to look at the various interactions that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had with the people around him during his lifetime and taking lessons from it, how we should follow his example, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our guest is uh, Sheikh Azam Al Hakim of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for having me. Our honor to have you with us as we continue the conversation. We have now turned to women. Our focus today is on women. Now, we've earlier spoken about the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We're not talking about the wives, we're talking about other uh, female members of society. Uh, without a doubt, I mean, we are both. Both sexes are human beings at the end of the day. We're made of the same stuff, the same things. And we depend on the same environment for our livelihood and our sustenance. But there is a difference between the sexes. Um, I'd like for you to uh, talk more about the essential nature of the woman. But before we do, I, I thought I would ask you to do a, compar a comparative introduction. How different societies, different religions, uh, across time and culture, have you the woman, uh, both her spirit, her body, her role in society? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala al-mab'uthi rahmatan lil alameen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Women, women, women. Can't live with them and can't live without them. <laughs> they say the same thing about us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we have the privilege of coming on TV and saying it. Mm. They don't, alhamdulillah. See, if you look throughout history, women were always mistreated mm. and dealt with as an inferior species. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The pharaohs, centuries ago, thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. they used to send and throw in the Nile one virgin girl as a sacrifice so that they won't have drought and that rain would fall mm -hmm. upon them. Mm -hmm. So they used to think that females are sacrificed, like we sacrifice animals. Mm -hmm. The Romans, and till recently, a few centuries ago, the Christians, did not consider women to have a soul. They debated whether it's like an animal or it's a different creature that has no soul. Mm. The Arabs even considered it as something that's worthless. And this is before Islam. So they used to inherit women. Mm -hmm. If a man dies, his sons would inherit his, their step mother. They would bury girls when they were young age so that they would not disgrace them when they grow old mm. and or bring poverty to them. Mm. And if you look at the Hindus, till a couple of decade, decades ago, mm -hmm. if a man dies, his woman is still considered to be his property. So he would be cremated Cremated, cremated. Mm -hmm. alongside with her. She would be burnt alive with her, the corpse of her husband. And this was banned, but it's still being practiced in India. Mm. Now, even in modern times, if you go to Europe, if you go to Russia, if you go to uh, uh, the US, women are not treated better on the surface they say we have our freedom, we can do whatever we want. And this freedom, if it's not controlled, this is what you have. The Red District in Amsterdam, in uh, uh, Soho, in London, you have escort girls, you have women displayed on billboards, mm -hmm. almost naked, mm -hmm. selling their bodies. And this is freedom? Mm -hmm. For what? It's, it's becoming a commodity in ads and, 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 and different things. Not only that, this freedom brought them nothing but, but disaster. In an FBI report, 2015, mm -hmm. it stated that approximately 400 women are being raped every single day 
in the U.S. 400 women daily. And another report for uh, uh, um, a reputable organization stated that this is not accurate. This is reported. What is not reported rises up to a thousand yeah. cases of rape in 2015. Mm -hmm. You do the math. We're in 2018 mm -hmm. and now, and, and Allah knows what's, is this the kind of respect we want for women? When Islam came, all of this has changed. Islam came and brought true freedom, dignity, mm. and respect to women. How can we say this? You're a Saudi cleric, you're a sheikh, and you're doing this. We know that women in Islam are subjugated, they are oppressed, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Well, don't quote me, and at the same time, don't listen to the Western media that tarnishes the reputation of Islam. Go to the sources. The Quran is there, and it's been there for 15 centuries. The Sunnah is there, the authentic Sunnah, and the biography, the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ clearly tells us how women were treated at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, great introduction. Um, and in fact, um, as you were speaking, I was thinking about U.S. history. This, this year is 2018, and um, it's been less than 100 years. 100 years ago in the United States, women were struggling to get the, the right to vote, to participate in the democratic process in the United States. Uh, so it really hasn't been that long. Uh, less than 100, 100 years, uh, and um, it, it, we're comparing it to uh, Islam that has been there much longer. And so what we hope to do in this conversation is uh, you know, work against this agenda-driven news media that has uh, the aim of tarnishing the image of Islam and Muslims. Uh, I would like to, to ask you, I, I, in the introduction, I said that I wanted you to speak more about this essential difference between the nature of a woman, the nature of a man. Uh, as, we, as I said, both, both of us, both sexes, are human beings. We have the same uh, frailties and needs uh, and wants. What was that like for the Prophet, peace be upon him? How did he, what did he want us to take away, the main difference between the races? Did he, not the races, but the, the sexes, did he want us to see women, did he want men to see women through the lens of mercy and gentility? Uh, can you talk about that? See, it is difficult, if not impossible, to have a shift in the way people think over decades, let alone over a few years, maybe less. Islam managed to transform the way men looked at women mm -hmm. when it came. And this is the beauty of Islam. If you look at Al-Haram of Mecca, the Masjid of Mecca, mm -hmm. when it is like a couple of minutes before time of prayer, you'll find people walking, you're sitting, reciting the Quran. Just when the iqama is given by the mu'adhin, he calls for prayer, in less than 15 seconds, the million people in the Masjid are in straight draws, hmm. not moving an inch. How could this be? This control, this order, this perfection. Islam has this power. So when the Prophet came, alayhi salatu wasalam, he simply transformed the way people think mm -hmm. into an Islamic way. Mm. Now the Prophet acknowledged the fact that men and women are different to one another. Okay. This is human nature. They mm -hmm. say men come from Mars, women come from Venus or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it happens. The way they think is different than the way we think. We think more with our brains, not our hearts. And they, it is different with them. They think more with their hearts. They, they, they think more with their feelings. And if they did not think with their feelings, we would have problems with upbringing the children. 
thank God for it. I, the world would be in shambles. <laughs> so if you come back to the way that the Prophet told us about women, so many times the Prophet would remind us of Allah and say, take care of women, take care of your women. The best of you are the best to their women and I am the best to my women. Mm. So he keeps on repeatedly reminding us to take care of our wives, to take care of our daughters, to take care of our mothers. Uh, uh, um, calling us to be dutiful, to be responsible, to see we have an obligation to their well-being. Indeed, to the extent that when a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, who among the people is more worthy of my good companionship? He said, your mother. The man said, then who? He said, your mother. The man said, then who? He said, he, your mother. Three times. Mm. And then the man said, then who? Then he said, your father. Finally. So women have a special status in men's life mm. and the mother has the highest of them all. Of them all. We'd like to continue more. When we come back after the break, Sheikh, I'd like to open up the social status of Muslim, uh, of women that the Prophet uh, ordered for us and guided us to after the break. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to With the Prophet. We continue our conversation about women uh, with uh, Sheikh Awesome. Not far from where we are, we're recording this in Cairo, the ne neighboring country of Libya. Uh, prior to his demise, Muammar Gaddafi was well known for having female bodyguards. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, elevated the status of women in that way and depended, placed his life in their hands. But uh, I'd like to know what it was like for the Prophet. Did he surround himself with female bodyguards, the Prophet, peace be upon him? Uh, what was his... Um, uh, how did he see the social status of women? Did he relegate them to certain uh, roles and duties? Talk about that, please. Well, the Prophet ﷺ could never ever do such a thing. This is disrespectful for women, having them as, as bodyguards or having them as uh, uh, playmates, Hugh Hefner. This is not Islam. Mm. Islam considers a woman as a jewel. You don't hold a jewel or a piece of diamond in your hand, exposing it to everyone. You cover it, you take good care of it, you put it in the safest place in your house. Likewise, imagine if we have a banana. Everybody likes bananas. If you peel a banana and you put it in display for someone to buy, would, any buy it? would anyone buy it? No, they want it closed. They want it unpeeled. They want it fresh as mm. it is. Mm -hmm. The Prophet والسلام, respected women. He loved women, his women that is. And this is why he first of all told us that women are the, 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 the sisters of men. They are the counterparts okay. of men. So mm -hmm. in a sense, they have the same rights, all in its own position. See, it is wrong to say that there is equality between the genders in Islam. Totally wrong. It, th that doesn't speak to the nature of the human being. We're talking about equality of roles. Uh, uh, both. Okay. See, there is no equality in the sense that I can't go to my wife and say, listen, let's, as we are equal, uh, uh, I'll get pregnant this year. It's, it's, it doesn't work this I'll, way. I'll share the burden. It can't happen. It, 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 this is something that Allah has given her and deprived me from it. Mm. There is fairness between the genders. And this is why a woman, even in her wealth, mm. she's not obliged to spend upon him, herself. And it's the duty of her husband, even if she's a millionaire, not a single penny. Mm. See there is a, a great amount of fairness. The Prophet ﷺ would not surround himself and expose women in such a fashion, but rather he would tell them that the best place for them is to do their role. Her role is to take care of her husband, of her children, of her house. This is half of the society. 
-hmm. because the society is your home and whatever is out of your home. Everybody has to go home and sleep somewhere. So if she takes good care of her man, mm -hmm. then she has done her due diligence, she has done her duty beautifully. For the man, it's not the other way around. Him sitting back home, cooking, taking care of the kids while his wife works. No, this is reversing the roles. He has to go out, he has to put the bread on the, uh, on the table, he has to endure all the troubles that men face outside. And this is why, why by the way, men die faster than women. You know, an interesting thing is um, evangelical Christians in the United States uh, have a very similar view when it comes to the roles of uh, the men and women in the household, in the family, in society. They say, the evangelical Anglo-Euro-Americans, that the reason why we have so many social ills is because the women are in the workplace and not at home. Amen. I, I, I second this. <laughs> See, the, the truth, wherever it is, we take it, embrace it. Now, does this mean we're against women working? Not at all. Not at all. But, see, Islam comes to diagnose the problem and gives solutions. Mm. It, it's not from me. It's from Allah Azza wa Jal. If a woman can work in a segregated place, mm. the job is halal, and her husband or father approves of that, the sky's the limit, go ahead. You can be, a woman can be a businesswoman, she can be a headmaster of a school, only for girls, she can teach in universities, only for girls, she can be a medical doctor, only for females. But there's a cost. I've, I've seen face-to-face, uh, -face, even people in my family, well-known persons, executives, government people, in tears, because they have to make the decision between folk, they're developing their professional career or uh, developing their children. And so it's a terrible uh, struggle that women are going through now. It's only been about True. a few decades in, the, in my country, but uh, they're in tears about it. I'd like to ask about another uh, uh, thing that has come about in the modern workplace, and that is handshaking. It's a, everybody has an opinion about it, um, and I don't know. I think perhaps there are two main positions. One is that there's no problem with it. The other is that there, sh there should not only be an abstinence of handshaking, but touching, male-female touching at all, should be avoided. Is this one of the issues, you know, there are many issues for Muslims where some things are more cultural and less Islamic. Mm -hmm. uh, is this one of those, or is there an Islamic basis for uh, 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 n no male-female handshaking? Unfortunately, there is a tendency among a lot of the Muslims. We come back to the issue of the frame and the picture. Yeah. A lot of the Muslims, when they th see that they have to compromise a lot of their habits and their daily routines, they tend to doubt and put suspicion whether this is cultural Islamic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, you're asking or you're telling? No, he says, um, I don't know. Listen, it's easy. You can Google it. Sheikh Google has the ability to give you answers. Mm -hmm. A lot of the websites, my website, Sheikh uh, al munajid's website, uh, islamqa.info, uh, will give you full details of what you want to learn. But don't put the cart or the wagon in front of the horse. Follow the procedure. Now, if we would like to know the ruling on this issue, it's very simple. Hmm. Hind bint Utbah, may Allah be pleased with her, when she accepted Islam, and that was on the conquest of Mecca, on the eighth, eighth year of Hijrah, hmm. she said to the Prophet ﷺ with other women, O Prophet of Allah, give us your hands so that we can shake it and give you the pledge of allegiance, because now we're new Muslims. What did the Prophet say, ﷺ? He said, I do not shake hands with women. Mm. You're not mahram, how can I touch you? And in an, another hadith, the Prophet stated والسلام, in black and white mm -hmm. that it is better for a man to be stabbed in his head with a needle of iron rather than to touch a woman that it is not permissible for him. 
So it is totally prohibited in Islam to shake hands with the opposite gender. Why is that? Because touching is far more dangerous than looking. Mm -hmm. You can look, but it is not as when you touch and you feel. And Islam preserves the chastity of both man and women. Nowadays, a lot of the Muslims mm -hmm. have, have lowered their guard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's natural for you to see someone shaking hands with other women who are not mahram to him. And when you tell them, Akhi, this is wrong, he said, Akhi, it's a cultural thing. In Spain, the yeah. culture is to kiss on the cheek. Right. And likewise in, in France. Mm -hmm. So what is this? If you go to some other country and the culture is to hug. In my country, a lesser form of that, we, we embrace our women. Even. Okay. This, is, this is problematic. Then what to do? This is, again, your choice, whether to abide by the Quran and Sunnah and become a Muslim putting the frame on your picture, or compromise. And, and Sheikh, not to labor the point, but oftentimes the standard of, of dress, of clothing, of attire for the women, um, and then in addition to that, you add to this practice of handshaking and embracing. I've been in some really uh, awkward situations, and I try to protect people's feelings when I'm in my country. All of my family are non-Muslim, so when their friends come, when relatives come, you know, they, we have to, it creates a situation for me, nevertheless. You, you, have, to, you have to do something about it, Akhi, because you have to draw the line. Mm -hmm. Because this is your religion. So simply, step uh, uh, back one or two steps. When, some, when you meet Nan Mahram, put your hands on your chest and just nod, mm -hmm. showing them mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you don't do I this. I respect you, but... Yes, but so many times you would probably find someone who is shameless and they know and they do this to you. Mm. And I, I face so many situations like this from women and some of them are even models coming and they know that this, and I just simply say, listen, mm. no can do. This mm. is haram in my religion. Sheikh, we're running out of time. We got about two minutes left. Uh, a couple things, uh, acts of worship uh, and charity. Uh, anything you'd like to say, and I'm sorry to do this to you, only a couple minutes. The Prophet والسلام, used to encourage women to give in charity. Mm -hmm. And he justifies this, especially to the married one, that they have problems with showing their gratitude to their husbands. And this is a major sin. See, the woman, if she prays five times, fast Ramadan, protects her chastity and obeys her husband, this is the formula for her to enter Jannah. Unlike men, they have to pray in the masjid, they have to have jihad, they have to uh, provide for their families, they have to do so many things. So the Prophet told the women in so many incidents that you have to give in charity in order for you to be protected from hellfire. As in the case of Eid, he used to encourage women to go to attend the Eid prayer. Unlike the masjids, he used to tell them that praying in your home mm -hmm. is far rewarding than praying in the masjid, even in my masjid. But he would not prevent them from entering the masjid. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, he would tell their guardians, do not prevent women from attending the masjid. Okay. But at the same token, listen women, it's best for you to pray in the masjid. In Eid, it was the opposite. He encouraged the women whether in their menses, whether they are young, whether they're old, to go and attend this gathering where a lot of Allah's blessings befall upon them and they would witness the da'wah of goodness with this Muslim gathering. So he used to recommend so many of them to do certain forms of worship specifically for women, mm -hmm. like his wife, for example, uh, uh, Zainab bin Jahsh. And he used to also warn them from being extreme. So even if they say, if, if he sees that they are extreme in this sense and doing something out of the sunnah, mm -hmm. he والسلام, would deny them from that. Mm, got it. I'm sorry to rush you, Sheikh, but I promise we'll come back for part two of women. Inshallah. Thank you very much for being with us.
All right, we'll conclude uh, today's episode uh, on women. We promise to come back with a second uh, part to conclude our discussion about women uh, that were around the Prophet, peace be upon him, to help guide us on our interactions with women. Uh, until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.